Hey, you're listening to No Limits PlayStation Podcast, episode 49. Or what? Four? Less than four days from Final Fantasy 16's launch? I think we are. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Bree and Sam. And you're listening to No Limits, a PlayStation podcast. Remember, you can find the video version of this pod over on youtube.com slash save the game media every Tuesday. And while you're over there, make sure, make sure, English guys, to subscribe to the channel. If you'd rather listen to audio, we're on all your favorite podcast services, and we would love it if you could leave us a review. It helps us grow, and we would love any feedback. If you want to support us and get early access to all Save the Game Media content, head over to patreon.com slash save the game media and choose the tier that's right for you. Just like our current patrons did Bucky blue, Amon, fabulous Brianna, Brianna's mom, Brianna's brother, Brianna's wife, Nikolai Knight, Cypher Primus, Brendan Myers, Mark, Sonia, Lillian, Mimi J, the snack network, David Hotright, Dave Harp, the Xbox expansion pass. And I believe Alpaca Tom has joined us again at his Patreon. I just didn't update the show notes, but I believe Alpaca Tom supporting us once again. Thank you, Tom. So once again, please go over to patreon.com slash save the game media to check all the Patreon content out and at Twitter at save game media and interact with us in the discord links are all in the show notes. How are we doing guys? Good. You know, good. All things considered, like I, um, I'm going through physio at the minute for my back, which is is a lot. Um, mm. But you know, it's it's all moving in a positive direction. Great, it's got to power through it. Uh, again, still going through a, a heat wave here currently in the UK. Nothing compared to what's uh, in other parts of the world. I guarantee uh, it's <laughs> pretty laughable. I would imagine in comparison, but for us, it's it's quite hot. Um, it yeah, hasn't really relented me. for like two weeks, um, which is the longest summer I've ever known. Um, and I'm I'm very busy as always, very tired, not getting a lot of sleep. But uh, I've been I've been having fun, you know, just doing stuff. It's it's nice to be back. I missed last week's. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay. All right, yeah, I'll awesome have you back. Mm-hmm. Brie? <laughs> um, I'm doing well. Nothing too crazy. Um, my work partner that does the other part of my job, I guess. You like guys broke up? My, no, she's okay. on a medical leave of absence. Oh, God. What a loser. That's <laughs> a joke. That's a joke, guys. All right. No, I, I genuinely like... Not only is it like there's so much work to do, so I had to train eight new hires this week. Ooh, that's a charge um, job. No, and, it's no, it's not. <laughs> um, so I had to train eight new hires this week, like or not new hires, six new hires, and then two not new hires, but they hadn't been trained on phones yet. So I had to train them on phones. And so there's people at various stages of training that I've been like trying to help. So it was it was a really really long week in work. Not to mention like I actually just like miss her as well. She like randomly texted me throughout the week and was like, "Oh, like I just made some sundubu and I thought about you because I know you couldn't handle the spice and stuff like that." So I I just missed my work partner as well. So do you guys hang out at all outside of work? Can this be a friend? No, no. I um we we have not hung out outside of work. So hmm. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. What about you, Taylor? You, <laughs> me? Don't worry about me. Oh, right. Every week. No, Moving right. on. Every week. No, 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 no. That's all right. I did some stuff. So we recorded our podcast last week on a Saturday Mm-mm. because of the stupid Xbox showcase that no one cares about. Um, and Starfield looked really good. And it might or may not have the controller. I actually we have something to say about Xbox this week, but continue how you're doing. And I've been contemplating getting a Series X because I am irresponsible, even though I have a capable mm. PC. Um, right. I beat Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on last, last Sunday. Yay, congrats. 
Yeah, thanks. 145 hours and six years later. <laughs> 112 shrines out of 120. I did not get the DLC. Maybe I'll return to the DLC later. And very good game. I had my ups and downs with it, but I think it was a fantastic game. Glad I stuck with it. And my only oh, yeah. complaint is that uh, rain, that, that shit needs to stop, all right? Not letting me climb because it's just raining and I have to wait for five minutes or sleep by a campfire. I wish there was some armor. It would be really easy to implement uh -uh. armor. I hear something like that exists in Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying that it's true. So very good game. I'll wait a good bit before jumping into Tears, which will be it's like two times the size of Breath of the Wild. A while it took me six years at least. So at this point, uh, it might take me 12 years to beat Tears of the Kingdom. But Jesus. Um also I beat Ghost of Tsushima yesterday. <gasps> Thanks. The one with the ghost in Tsushima. Yeah, that one. <clears throat> and it was a very good game. I have one. I think I have only two minor complaints. One is stealth is a bit re repetitive in its gameplay loop. Mm -hmm. I think there could have been more stealth tools compared to how many tools you have in open combat. And But very good. The ghost armor snuck in there as probably being my fav favorite armor set come late game. Oh, and Sam, you were wrong about the Mongol commander armor. It does make you harder to detect. And when you're amongst Mongols, according to the description, item description. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's be fair, it is three years old. So it's like, you know, I, I beat it so long ago, Taylor, that I just have gone. He's just such a good gamer. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, Thank you for the correction, though, because, you know, put me in my yeah. place. Yeah, of course. That's why. Well, have you beat any other games, Sealer? Uh, no, just no, those just, two. Just those two. Uh, and <laughs> I will say the there was a sequence before the final boss that I kind of wasn't a fan of. Um, or mm. be before you kill the final boss, leading up, leading up to it, Sam, I'm going. I'm going to DM you what I'm talking about here. And I'm curious okay. if you'll, because oh, I'm a pretty big spoiler avoidance guy. So I don't like talking about it openly if I can avoid from other people's experience. And That's this nice. sequence before the final boss. Oh, yeah. I beat the whole game on lethal. So uh, Jesus, it was, it was difficult. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I know what you mean. But maybe yeah. if I wasn't playing on lethal, uh, I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> it's just, sorry. When I say final boss, the main final foe in the game. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I, I get what you mean. I, it, it, especially if you played it on lethal, it could be, it could feel a little bit long in the tooth. Um, I think I spent about an hour grinding that out yeah. before I got it. So, yeah. But fair play, you did it. You know, you you Thanks. you are the ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that's what my parents tell me. Yeah. 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 And excellent, fantastic looking game in on the 4K TV. Uh, always beautiful. And also the tales, the way that the tales of Tsushima, the named ones ended with Norio, Ishikawa, Lady Masako, Kenji, um, and Yuna. I thought they were very well done. It's worth seeing those mm -hmm. tales through. Um, and all the mythics. Yeah. I think the last one I, I beat was Six Blades of Kojiro, where there are many duels with Straw Hat Ronin you have to go through. Yeah. Dope. And I think there will be, I think there's got to be, got to be a sequel coming, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, what else could Sucker Punch be working on? Unless it's, unless it's a remake of Infamous or Infamous 3 that continues Cole's story, I'll allow it. You know, I'd love that. Two. Yeah.
but I yeah, like Ghost was too successful. I think it was too big for them to not capitalize on it. You know, right. in the same way that I'd love to see something new IP wise from Insomniac, but again, Spider Man was so successful, they're obviously gonna milk that for at least th this next game, if not right. a trilogy, and then potentially move on to something else. Yeah, I know they're doing Wolverine, but that's still Marvel, so right. you know, yeah. tangential. Am I sadist for wishing there was more dismemberment in Ghost? Maybe I am. We only got a little bit. There was some decapitation and some chopping arms off. Yeah. But you, you couldn't do it at will. Other than let's, having let's a strike. Let's go Metal Gear Revengeance style, you know? Let's just oh, okay. dice into, them into pepperoni. Yeah. That, that thin. <laughs> Again with the pepperoni. Dear pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm in that zone at the minute. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, I still, I did not play Iki Island. I'm going to return to it. I'll return to it later. Mm -hmm. um, but I put it aside for now because today I plan to start the Final Fantasy 16 demo and yeah. ride that into Thursday. Yeah. That's the only thing I've been playing. I've been playing, I've played, I think I've played the Final Fantasy 16 demo maybe like six or seven times. Oh god. Um just just getting used to the combat. Like particularly because people aren't aware of this. I'll clarify for those that don't know, because a lot of people seem to be missing it. Once you complete the first section, the main section of the demo, which lasts like two-ish hours, you unlock an additional section of the game from later in the story. And it's at the bottom option on the main menu called the iconic challenge. Um and I think they say that, that like some of the abilities that you have won't be available in that part of the story normally, but they're just opening up like some of the suite of stuff that you have uh, to let you test out the combat more. And I've just been playing that bit specifically over and over because um, okay. the combat is so great. And I think I just want to get into the nitty gritty stuff and make sure that I can pull off combo switching between the iconic powers ready for before release so that's literally all i've been playing otherwise i haven't had enough time mm. so exciting right. yeah. um i played the final fantasy 16 demo yesterday Ooh. and beat it and the iconic challenge yeah how was it um uh oh it was, oh. no, it was really good. No, no, no. It was really good. I'm just trying to think of, like, because I don't want to, like, spoil anything for you, Taylor. You know? So, like, I would say it was really good. And then it was brutal. Like, absolutely brutal. And I was, like, yeah. And I oh. was not here for it. Were you crying? I think I was so shocked that, like, I didn't. But if I hadn't been so shocked, I probably would have been sobbing, yes. Oh, geez. Because even from the like that first little <clears throat> from the main portion of the demo, it seems like it's going to be the most like dark Final Fantasy oh. tonally speaking. Absolutely. So. Um, I will say, okay, I'm gonna just nerd out for just a half a second. Um, a lot of the clothing that is available in this is um clothing that you can actually get in Final Fantasy 14. Um, mm -hmm. and so there's like a lot of crossover stuff. So I'm kind of wondering if, um, this is one of the shattered realms. So for final fantasy 14, sorry, if you guys aren't like fully aware of it, basically like there's like this crystal and it shattered. And so there's like 13 sides of this crystal or whatever, or 13 realms that are related to this crystal. And my theory is that this, like this final fantasy 16 is one of the realms. There's just too many similarities with like Aorzea and stuff like that. Um, that's my theory just based on like the way that things are going, like the color scheme, like I could literally go into Final Fantasy 14 and buy like half of the characters outfits, like literally right now. So it's just like, there's too many, there's too much stuff that kind of like overlaps. So like, wait, but... so in, in 14, you're saying the, the crystal split because in 16, we know that they're like. Yeah, the big the, hulking chunks of crystal. Yes. Uh huh. And they look all the exact of the same. Are built around. Oh, yep. And that oh, is exactly those are the teleportation. That's how you get between cities. Is those the crystals? Maybe then. 
Maybe. So well, I could be totally well, wrong and it could just be like Final Fantasy being Final Fantasy. And I know a lot of the Final Fantasy 14 team worked on this game. So it could just be because of that. Um, but there are a lot of similarities. So that's my like far reaching theory, I guess. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I've got to play Final Fantasy XIV then, you know, just in case. I okay. You should okay. You want to see something so sad though? If you look up, don't do this, Taylor, until you've played the demo. If you look up um, Titan in Final Fantasy XIV, it's like the saddest thing ever. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Uh, so you what you're saying is that Final Fantasy XVI is not like Kingdom Hearts? No, I wish. I love Kingdom Hearts. Ew, fractions and decimals oh. right here. <laughs> yeah right that's but if you look up yeah interesting choice right yeah so if you look up any of the other ones like if you look up um like uh let's look up garuda garuda looks almost the same um freaking what's her name the crystal one or ice one she looks the same Shiva. yeah shiva looks the same she there's also this part everybody so it's a raid boss that you can run and you can get like mounts and stuff from it so people run it very frequently for shiva um, it's not called that, but there's this part where she kind of like swirls around the arena and it, you're like kind of frozen in place. And then she'll step in the middle of the arena just with like her little foot or whatever, but it, she's stepping about head height. So everybody will try and get to like where she stands <laughs> so that they get stepped on <laughs> in the middle of that move. Oh my God. <laughs> I freaking love it. It's the funniest. Anyways, I love Final Fantasy 14, and there's like so much Final Fantasy 14 in this mm, game. It's not even right. funny. So, see how long it takes me to finish this game. Final Fantasy 16. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I forgot to mention. I saw a film last night. Sam probably heard of it Mulholland Drive. Yes. By Mr. David Lynch, my first mm -hmm. Lynch film. That sounds really bad in a sentence. My first David Lynch film, not a film <clears throat> about lynching. Indeed. Okay, let me clarify this. Um, <laughs> what a weird film. Uh, but I, th I think I liked it. It is one of these you don't know what's going on. But yeah, that's 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 the general takeaway for most of Lynch's stuff. To be honest, it's like I think I like that. I'm not sure I understood half of what was going on, but. Look good, so yeah. Naomi Watts is in a brie if you've heard of her, yeah. and another actress, she's very attractive, and I forget her name. Uh, yeah, oh wait, Laura Herring, no, Harry, I don't know, but I also I want to see Wild at Heart next with Nick Cage and Laura Dern. It sounds mm -hmm. Willem Dafoe's in it, apparently. It sounds fun. Yeah. Oh my god, I watched um, Into the Spider Verse this weekend. <laughs> Ooh, wait, wait, across or into. <laughs> into it Wait, was you see so crazy one? going back after the second oh one. going back see i want to re-watch <laughs> the first one but it's only on hulu before i see the second i don't have hulu i just bought it oh. i don't have hulu either i canceled my hulu because hulu i was stupid it. and dumb and stupid but i'll probably switch to hulu here shortly hmm. netflix being the jerks so, you know i need to see into the spider-verse i need to see oppenheimer I need to see another film I'm forgetting. Across the Spider-Verse is what you have to see. That's what I meant. I need to see The Flash. Elemental? Are you going to watch that? No, I don't know. Oh, there's an artsy film called... Mm, what is it called? Asteroid City? Past... No, oh, it's an indie film called Past Lives. Mm. A24. I want to see. I saw, I saw multiple previews for it. Um, it's a it's a romance film. Okay. Not that me being the masculine man I am would ever enjoy a film about romance. Yeah. Just to clarify. That's right. But I just want to see it for research. You know what's so funny is like that romance novels exist and then men are like women are so confusing. <laughs> it's one of my oh, favorite I've, things. I have a friend who reads a lot of romance novels and she loves all the smut and I'm like, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. I, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? <laughs> Absolutely. And then, um, no, but the thing is, is like, they're like, I, it, it's literally almost like a manual for like 
not all of them. There are some dark romance. Don't follow those ones. But just like the baby. basic, the base. That's not dark romance. That's, anyways. I'm not gonna get into descriptions about what is what. Forty shades. I wonder if somebody wrote something like that now. Anyways, um, so it doesn't matter. It's a whole. It's a whole manual. If you really need help getting with girls, just read books. Read romance novels. Just the basic ones, though, please. I heard it here first, guys. <sighs> books are cool, you know. That's that's I why all reading. all the nerds have girls. That's 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 the true facts, right? Facts. Yep. There are no other kinds of nerds. What would be a better place? Hot take. That would mean I'm I'm a bigger fan of Marvel than both of you. <laughs> bigger, bigger fan than Sam. That's tough. yeah, yeah. It's because I'm a girl. <laughs> Can't argue with that logic, you know. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Anyway. Wait, before we get into the stories, there's two things I need to mention. Um, one, I beat and played um or I played and beat Planet of Lana. Really good. Sam, you'll like it whenever you have free time. It'll probably be an easy one hundred percent. Um Ooh. not that I know if you care about your Xbox. Wait, is it a horror game? Or... Get that get that hundred percent out of here. What, what are you talking about? Hundred percent. 100% is 100% is on, is on Steam. I mean, technically, Platinum is on I don't Steam, know. But... I don't know what it's called on Xbox. A hundred, a thousand gamer it, store. It, yeah, I mean, it is just like a hundred percent. Technically, oh, okay. it's a thousand gamer store. But, uh, oh, yeah, guys. I am so close to getting a Series X. Don't do it. Um, so close. Okay. What are you going to play on it? They don't have uh, games over there. I'm just going to wait until Starfield comes out. And then, and, but I also want to play Forza. For, Forza. Okay, Not but Forza, think about Forza. this. Think about this, Taylor. You know, Starfield locked at 30 FPS on consoles. I know that you've got a PC, and so I got a even PC. if it's not a high end PC, <sighs> you can run Starfield at 60. So you'll get the optimal want, experience on the I want to play it on my TV, have. but I'm so I'm considering should I just get a 50 foot HDMI cable and send it and see what happens? You know what? I mean, hey, sounds, sounds as good as any other plan. Yeah, so yeah. I guess. I guess I might have to do that, but it, right, it is locked oh. at thirty. So if it's locked at thirty, sorry, but the gameplay okay. that was shown in the Xbox showcase for it didn't look yeah. stuttery, which was why I was surprised when they said, "I'm pretty sure they said the gameplay in the showcase was from Series X, which meant it was locked at thirty, and that thirty did not look bad." Like Uncharted Four and Last of Us Two, thirty FPS when those two games launched was a really good thirty, but it's still not sixty. But it's not as bad as what 30 on paper might look like, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's so hard to say because they can say that it's running on a, a Series X, but it's like, is it, is it like, how, how do we it's know one for sure? Up to like a a dev Series support. X that has extra power. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. So um, it could well be, but it's one of those things where like, I'll believe it when I see it. They just run the cables through the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, console. pass through the signal and say it's running through Series X. <laughs> yeah, like a capture card. Um, so Planet of Lana, um, the soundscape was amazing. Ooh. Um, the music was amazing. There's a couple songs in there that I added into my music. It was really good. Um, and it was just like a really fun puzzle game. It was like it's very artsy, and you kind of just run to the side kind of thing. Um, but there are some really fun puzzles in there, so it was a good, quick experience. Oh, it's all Game Pass. I can play it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It was pretty fun. It was only, I think I only played it for like maybe four hours, maybe five at most. Um, so not too bad. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention um, is um, Layers of Fear um, because they were so kind as to send us a code for review. So I'll be working on the review for that. Um, oh, okay. What's so funny, Sam? Um, that was me laughing. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't laughing. It's awkward. Uh, whoops. I was off tap looking at Xbox stuff. Sam, we have the same laugh. Oh, God. Categorically incorrect. But <laughs> That's apparently, so mean. Totally we do. <laughs> wow. That's so mean. I think we do. <laughs> We're twins. <laughs> Again, just uh, completely incorrect. <laughs> but I, I don't want to play into your delusions, Brie. <laughs> Anyways, um, Couple things with layers of fear. One, if you want to see a hilarious video, I personally I couldn't stop laughing afterwards. 
Um, there's a video in the host chat that's like a minute and 40 seconds long. And it's me trying to play the game. <laughs> and I pause like every three seconds <laughs> to yeah, the point Kevin where was... Kevin was so mad. <laughs> Kevin was like, Bree, just play the game. <laughs> I was scared. So that's basically going to be my experience. The other thing I want to say, because it really upset me, the Xbox. Okay, you guys know I have a weird thing with textures. The freaking Xbox controller made me want to throw up. I hate what the texture. What is wrong with you? I hate the texture of that controller so much. What? What's wrong with the matte finish? It. <sighs> Wait, do you have the series controller? Like, how old is your Xbox controller? I don't know. I literally don't know. It's not even mine. It's my dad's. Okay, it show me a picture. Grossed me out. Put it up. Okay, I'll I'm send afraid. you a picture. Oh wait! Oh wait! It's not here. It. Oh, it's, it's your dad's. Here. Wait, wait. Yeah. So, does your dad have an Xbox Series console or an Xbox One? I think he's a one. When did he get his Xbox? I don't know, just barely, but he bought it used. Anyways, it doesn't so, matter. So, the controller I think, feels disgusting. I think I understand which controller you're talking about. I think that's the Xbox One controller, which is notably it has so much texture. It has so much texture. Why is it like that? It Maybe, really you know, grosses me out. Series controller has more texture. Maybe I don't the series know. controller. I, the, I don't know, but I can't oh, touch it. I know. Was the D-pad was the D-pad of the controller almost like um a paneled circle or oct octagon, or was it just have four distinct directions? I think it's more circle-y. So I think so that, that is the series controller. I'm surprised you don't like it. I, I like that controller more oh than my. the Xbox One controller. I was like I like wanted to cry and then go back to my PlayStation oh my controller. It was disgusting. Free. It was Free. almost like as bad as like a Twinkie, dude. That's how that's how grossed what? out I was. Sam, what are your thoughts on the series controller? I think it's a good controller. Never held one in my life. You have a series don't S. Do it. Oh, you see, but I don't pay attention to what the, the names of the controllers are. I mean the controller that came with your series S. Hang on. <laughs> oh wait, actually, yeah, see, I can just put it in frame. Yeah. Bree, is this what I, the controller looked yeah, like? Yeah, that was it. It was nasty, okay. dude. Was it white or black? White. So we probably had a Series S. Your dad probably got an Xbox Series S. Um, I mean, it's it's very coarse on the back, which I don't. I'm I know. Fan of. Why is it? Just to piss like, you off. I like really I just it. my hand off on my leg because like, I'm Mr. Xbox fanboy right now. I love that controller. Anyways, that's all mm. I had to say about that. But it was very important. I said it because it grossed me out so much. Well, if you played it on Game Pass for PC, you could have used your DualSense and hooked it up. Actually, I don't know if the Game Pass PC app accepts a DualSense. You could wrap it in an Xbox um, X input wrapper, and it would work that way if it if it didn't already work out of the box. I already have a software that will just read controllers for me and map them if I need Is it to. DS4 Windows? I don't know what it's called. I'll find well, it, your, and then I'll tell you. That's your PlayStation controller, DualShock 4s, but... I'll tell anyway, you what I it's almost it. a half. All right, look for, while you look for it. It's been almost a half hour, guys. Yeah, I think we should get into the news, as my buddy Keemstar would say. Uh, oh, uh, Sam just loves hanging out with us. Keemstar is not my buddy, for the record. Oh my god, we got. Hold on, Brie, did you find it? No, it's fine. Just keep going. That's what yeah, I'm of course saying. you can find I it. I can't remember. That's what I thought. Whoa. Whoa. I think I think we can group. The it's fine. Person, Just go. Just the go. first and second stories together into PlayStation Plus. But there's still technically two links. I get it. But like you still will have to click on two links. All right. You know all, know right. I mean? all right. All right. All right. All right. I'll erase the story if it makes you feel better. No. 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 But don't. There's two right. links. Did no, we already talk about the monthly games for June yet? No, we didn't. Have... It's eight. because we wow. only talked about one story last week. Go. It is eighteen. Go. 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 It is eighteen days into June. We still haven't talked about the monthly games that you can still receive with about two weeks left in the month or so it's still our monthly time to talk our monthly playstation plus essential titles for june are nba 2k23 jurassic world evolution 2 and trek to yomi 2k23 is nice i'm gonna try because i love basketball i never got 2k23 um jurassic world evolution can go do stuff in, in its own corner and trek to yomi is mid so my take is this is, for Essential, I think it's still a pretty good month because 2K23 is a pretty massive game. Granted, sports games devalue quickly. Still. Sports games aren't fun. I love sports games. Shame on you. 
It's not the worst month, but I guess I you stand, could say there's something for most players. It's got a little something for everybody. Thanks, Sam. Not for me, though. <laughs> all right. All right. You're busy, enough. anyways. That's fine. Yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> Sam's busy playing undisclosed, redacted, which he will be able to disclose in a future moment. Where At some that? point, he's doing only future, fans. Yeah. Spider-Man 2. All right. Our gins really change these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, here are games joining the... I believe all of these are coming to PlayStation Extra and Premium. Mm -hmm. These are Far Cry 6, TMNT Shredder's Revenge, Rogue Legacy 2, Inscription, Solstice, Tacoma, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Killing Floor 2, Lonely Mountain Downhill, Vampire the Masquerade, Cauteries of New York, 100 Days Winemaking Simulator, Had in Time, Carto, Forager, Dodgeball Academia, The Wild at Heart, Red Out 2, Thief for PS4, horrible version of Thief, sorry, I just had to say that, MX versus ATV Legends, Paw Patrol Mighty Pups, Save Adventure Bay, and that's Kevin's favorite. This is going to platinum that. My Friend Peppa Pig, DC League of Super Pets, the Adventures of Crypto and Ace, the Talos Principle Deluxe Edition, Elix or Elix 2, and Conan Exiles. And for the Classics catalog, we have Killzone Liberation, Worms, Herx Adventures, and Coded Soul. That is the weakest lineup of classics. That's not, those aren't even classics. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but of the first lineup I mentioned, the bulk of these games think Far Cry 6, A Hat in Time, Shredder's Revenge. Peppa Pig. Shredder's Revenge. Those are solid. You guys should play Inscription. I know, Sam, you started it. I don't know I'm scared to play Inscription. It. Isn't it psychological? Isn't it like a horror? It cartoon? is kind of spoopy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Toph will have to be okay. I'm going to play that one. Isn't that right, Toph? Isn't that right? Tom? I don't think it's like overly scary. It's just kind of like eerie and weird. Oh, like me. Yeah. Yep. What? What's wrong, Sam? Nothing, you know? <laughs> um, from this lineup, I think I'll probably pick up Tacoma. Um, I've always Why? Tacoma. Tacoma is great. Because no, I like that studio. Yes, it is. What studio? What do they have? Fulbright. House? Yeah, Fulbright. I was going to say House Bright. Fulbright. Oh, God. Sci fi nerve adventure. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's gone home, people, right? Yep. Yep. Who's going gone home? Gone home is great. Gone home is great. So, Tacoma is also great. Oh, this is like the only two games they made Gone Home and Tacoma. I've never played Gone Home. It's great. You think it's a scary game. It's not. <laughs> scary game. I was so scared the whole time playing it, and then it was not scary. Sam, what do you think about this month for extra and premium? We don't care about premium, just extra. Uh, what do you think about extra? I think it's one of the best months that there's been, and there have been some strong months uh, as of late. Really? think it's um, better than the months we got Horizon and Ratchet and Clank ripped apart? I wasn't finished speaking, Taylor. All right. This is my fault. I think overall, you could say that other months, other previous months in recent memory have been better in terms of the quality of the games, but in terms of quantity alongside some quality, I think that that is really the perfect um, medium for me as a player. And I can only really tackle it subjectively from my perspective. Because for those previous months that you mentioned, you know, Forbidden West or Rift Apart coming in, those are excellent months. But as someone who buys most first party games day one to play them, their inclusion into the catalog doesn't really mean anything to me. Whereas this mm. has introduced some lower tier games that are still of a very high quality. And then admittedly some junk filler 
but also some other games that I probably would never have played or I wish other people could play, like Tacoma. Um, Hat and Time is great. Um, like you said, I even think that like. LX2 isn't great necessarily, but it's like a good time if you're just looking for a bit of a shooter to play. Um, so I think in terms of what I would like PlayStation Plus to be on a consistent basis, this is kind of like the blueprint that I would want them to follow, where they are delivering a, a good amount, like a surprising amount of games each month of varying degrees, sizes, scales, qualities. Um I think that that's the, the most that we can ask of them uh, if they aren't doing day one releases, which they aren't. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, see, that was easy. Quick, quick and easy. All done? Yeah. We forgot to take the time code. That's fine. Oh, okay. sorry. No, you're good. Um, next one. Yeah. Sam just turned it into a cat. <laughs> Sam likes. Sam, you should read this. You like PSVR. I do. Hang on, I'll get it open. I'll, I'll get it open now and I'll read it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It cuts. It cuts off on that monitor. So I'll bring it over to this one. We have new PSVR two games announced. Uh, those consist of Tiger Blade. Wanderer, The Fragments of Fate, Pixel Ripped in 1995, and The Seventh Guest VR. Uh, I'm reading from PlayStation Blog, Sean Benson, who's the head of Portfolio Global Third Party Relations. He has said, uh, we're happy to announce four new titles making their way to PSVR 2 in the near future. Um, the blog shows each of their reveal trailers. Um, these four join the ever-growing PSVR 2 lineup, which includes games like recently launched Beat Saber and upcoming games like the mind-bending sci-fi shooter Synapse, Resident Evil 4 VR, um, and the other new additions that we saw at last month's showcase, which is maybe two other games. So I don't know why they didn't just name them there, but whatever. Uh, so Tiger Blade is, quote, a stylish adrenaline-soaked combat of the very best Korean neo noir action cinema. Whoa. Uh, slash and blast your way through ranks of hoodlums in a high stakes chase through the atmospheric and meticulously recreated marketplaces, docks, alleys, and streets of Seoul in an alternate version of Korea. Uh, designed to be highly replayable with a scoring and ranking system, online leaderboards, and speedrunning alongside secondary objectives. Uh, haven't watched the trailer for this because I've been too busy, but it sounds cool. Um, I'd have to see. It's weird. Like, uh, as someone who played a, a lot of PSVR 1, I always found that there was a disparity between the, the descriptions of the games and the actual experiences you got. Not necessarily a massive disparity, but th there's a lot of, of, of buzzwords here. Like very best of Korean neo-noir action cinema. Um, I, I, I don't know what that means in action, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll find out. You got a katana, katana so that looks that looks cool. Um, Wonder of fragments of fate. Let's see, heart pounding action and mind bending puzzles as you rewrite the past to reshape the future. Uh, da, 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 epic time travel adventure like no other. It is a remake of the award-winning, critically acclaimed Wanderer, completely reimagined for the next generation of VR. I've never heard of that game, Wanderer. Uh, da, 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 da. It talks about how you can swim, jump, crouch, climb, zip line, swing your way through time. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it looks like you've got a crowbar. Maybe this is a, a budget Half-Life Alex. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'll take it. Pixel Ripped 1995. Um, this is a sequel, I think, because I remember there being a different Pixel Ripped game on the original PSVR. Um, let's see. You play an 11-year-old kid named David. Um, you explore a range of games, each designed as a loving homage to 16-bit and 32-bit classics, all within an immersive virtual reality world. Um, oh no, okay, maybe this is 
a PSVR 2 version of the original game, perhaps. The mm. game has been enhanced and improved for its PSVR 2 debut. Yeah, okay. Uh, so correction there it is the, the original pixel ripped game, but brought into PSVR 2 with all the special features, adaptive triggers, headset feedback, etc. Uh, and then the seventh guest VR. It is uh, iconic 90s supernatural mystery game. Uh, brand new puzzles, new spaces to explore, and a new technical benchmark of its own. 3D live action graphics by way of ghostly volumetric video capture. Uh, they talk about how they filmed the actors in a circular setup to make them uh, the character models believable, etc., etc. Um, eye tracking allows you to delve into the intricate details of puzzles by focusing your eyes on specific pieces and areas within the rooms. Well, the sense controllers, adaptive triggers make every item feel tangible. Ooh. Uh, it's a visceral and haunting story. Uh, it's a puzzle game, boys and girls. You know, that, that's what you're getting. There's a whole bunch of them on VR, and this is yet another one. Um, yeah, those are four games coming to PSVR 2. Still no Half-Life Alex, which is, like, ridiculous. But, alas, seems it may never come. Sam, when do you yeah. think you're going to buy a PSVR 2? Um, well, here's the thing. I was originally planning on on getting it for uh, picking it up as a treat for myself for my birthday this year. Um, but then the Spider-Man 2 pre-orders. Oh, announced. right. Oh, yeah. So Tell the listeners. Like, you just yeah, picked up so the collector's edition, right? I, I did. I did secure a collector's edition of Spider-Man 2. An so 18-inch like, statue? 19-inch statue? 19-inch. The, all the inches matter, you know? Every inch counts. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what they say. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So I was like, do I want to spend essentially 500 pounds on VR or do I want to spend 200 pounds on the collector's edition and save a bit of money? My logic being the collector's edition are while stocks last, I'll be able to buy a PSVR 2 whenever I want. So it's like, there was a air of urgency to the Spider-Man 2 collector's mm -hmm. edition. So I changed my mind. So I, I got the collector's edition for myself as a treat. But I will, I would say by the end of this year, I will probably have a, a VR2 headset. Okay, cool. But don't, but I will, don't hold me to that. But that's, that's that. sort of what I'm spitballing as as the ballpark for when I'll acquire mm -hmm. one. As a, as a budget sim racing rig, Gran Turismo 7 with steering wheel pedals and PSVR 2. Yeah. Doesn't seem that bad compared to the people who spend like $10,000, like literally $10,000 on a full force feedback PC racing rig. Yeah. So Could always there. buy the Apple. Apple. That's only 3000 Yeah. 3500 Uh-oh. 4500 no, I think it's 3500 it's definitely in the threes. Vision Pro. Yeah, 3500 Yeah. You can play all the VR games in that, right? Oh, wait, you can't? Oh. Well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys ready for the next one? Mm hmm Okay. Um, let me get the time code down. Um, so Sony says it's not releasing its first party games on PS Plus on when on day one. They are continuing to do it because it's working. Uh, in an interview, I'm so sorry. This is coming from VGC from Chris Scullion. I believe is how you say his name. Mm -hmm. um, in an interview with in GamesIndustry.biz, Vice President and Global Head of Subscriptions, Nick McGuire, said the company had no interest in making all its first party games available day one, like Microsoft does with Xbox Game Pass. Quote, we're happy to accept our strategy. Putting games in a bit later in the life cycle um, has meant that we can reach more customers 12, 18, 24 months after they have released, McGuire said. Um, yeah. Continues, we're, we're seeing customers still get excited about those games and jumping in. For us, that's working. Occasionally, there will be an opportunity to invest in a day and date release, release like Stray, excuse me. Um, and we will jump on those when, when they come in. But for us, letting those first party games go out to the platform outside the service first, that's working. And that will continue to be our strategy moving forward. 
Um, when asked if the strategy could change in the future for PlayStation's planned live service titles in order to ensure a large audience for them at launch, McGuire didn't uh, commit either way. We are constantly working on what the right strategy is moving forward, how our player habits going to evolve, and how do we make sure the service meets those future habits. Um, there's no more I can say at this moment, but obviously we are keeping cl close to it and thinking about the role that Plus can play moving forward. Okay, that's it. Yeah. How do we feel? Fine. You know, like, I think this is, it's so easy, this story for like the the fanboys to come out of the woodwork mm, nom, nom. And, be, and and look at me when I make a statement like that and be like, oh, you're a Sony pony. You're, a you're Sony going to give all your money away. You're wearing a blue shirt. Character. You like Sony. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm wearing a blue shirt. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I do like Sony. That's true. Um, but like, they're not wrong. It is working. So why would they change course? And I'll beat the drum over and over that Game Pass is great, but in long term, it's not sustainable. Game dev costs are going up and up year on year. And at some point, Microsoft are going to have to either stop doing day and date, day one, first party, or increase the price of Game Pass. If they do either, they've conditioned their fan base to such an extent that they will riot when either of those choices are made. I'm going to riot. Because either okay. PC Game, Game Pass, Pass is 10 bucks. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and it, 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 I can guarantee it's not going to stay that way long term. Um, particularly if they are supposedly trying to put out a big AAA game every quarter. Like, even Sony aren't doing that. So it's like you're throwing well, a whole lot of money into this thing. Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Came out this month. Not for last, party, but okay. I know I okay. we're getting, we're getting semantics. I, we're was getting stupid. Semantics. If it's exclusive, I always consider it. I always, I, I just think about exclusives and non-exclusives. That's how I think about it. But then, even even with Final Fantasy and what Spider Man Two, that's two. yeah, that is so, two. And I know that they've secured like some indie exclusives like Chia earlier in the year and stuff like that, but. If we're talking about like big, big budget games, which is what seemingly Microsoft is shifting a bit more towards, mm. um, you know, from the from the showcase, even the the quote unquote smaller games from smaller studios seem to be going for a bigger budget look and feel um, than they might have previously done. Like, uh, what is it, South of Midnight by Compulsion? That looks. Mm. I mean, as much as we didn't see any gameplay or anything, well, that seems good. to be going for a much bigger sort of deal in general than we have if he was um so it's like again it's working for sony they are on a completely different business trajectory currently than microsoft are mm -hmm. they are fundamentally different companies on a financial level so sony just cannot do this currently day one release if they could i'm not even sure they would if they could but they might but they can't so they won't and they are still selling games like gangbusters every time they mm -hmm. put out a first party game. So keep doing it. And they will come to PS Plus, like we're seeing a year or two later with Horizon and Ratchet recently. So I have no issues whatsoever. Call me a fanboy if you want. But if they're coming out of quality, then I'll pay what they're worth. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, how do you feel about this, Taylor? Are you just like, meh? I expect them to do this. So. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is if it's working, it's working. It would be one thing if it, like, wasn't working for them and, you know, and then Plus was, like, really flopping, but it doesn't seem to be. So. Yeah, they're doing just fine. I'm not, okay. I'm not really surprised. Okay, next one. This one's a quick one. That X, talk, one. that X talk is picked up. Actually, I want to do story you, six. Can someone do else do story five? We I'll, still need you know, to do I'll, four. I'll do, I'll do four. It's fine. Okay. I'll, I'll do four. Thank you. Uh, oh, wait. Whoops. whoops. I we just skipped. Now have I just skipped four. Sorry. Yeah. Insomniac do... Games okay. has confirmed that the 10 suits available in the digital deluxe edition of Spider Man 2 will be exclusive to Boo. that edition and cannot be unlocked. 
through gameplay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, no. in the Digital Deluxe Edition, there are 10 unique suits, five for Peter Parker, five for Miles Morales, um, each of which have been designed by different artists from across various industries. Uh, that's including people like Raf Grassetti, who was for a long time art director at Sony Santa Monica, but he left recently. Uh, Chris Anker, who was one of the lead character designers for Across the Spider-Verse, mm. um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they look interesting, unique, at least. Some people say that they don't look great. I agree that the little tiny pictures we have on the um, splash screen for the Digital Deluxe, they don't look excellent necessarily, but I'm sure they'll look better in game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're booing Taylor, so obviously you're not happy with this. Nope. It's fine if they're included in Digital Deluxe Edition. Just make them achievable through gameplay. Granted, they all look ugly, in my humble opinion. <laughs> the pre-order should hey, actually look better. Yeah, it's subjective, so. Um, but I don't like it. Just let me unlock it through gameplay. Please, why? Sam doesn't care. Because he gets this like and a 19-inch statue. Yeah. Is there a Miguel one? Or... Uh, I mean, there was a, a t there was a twenty nine nine in the original game, mm, okay. in the twenty eighteen game. So, I imagine that all of the suits that were available in both Spider Man PS four and Miles Morales will and, come over into this one. And if each suit has the thing, I while the suits might be ugly, the thing I loved about twenty eighteen was trying all the different suits and their signature ability. If, mm -hmm. if the, all, assuming all these suits now have ten signature abilities, that will be I, I don't believe they will. Oh. I think, I th I think that that would be a real issue, but from my understanding, it these are just cosmetics as opposed to because um, they did that with um, again with Spider Man PS4. There were suits that you could purchase, but they were included within the City That Never Sleeps DLC. Oh, okay. So technically, you got the suits alongside new content, whereas with this game, you are just getting the suits. Right. And obviously all the other stuff in the digital yeah. life, but there's no actual new content. Um, but those suits that were in City That Never Sleeps that you paid for, they didn't have abilities either. All right. So all right. I, I would be led to believe that these won't. Because I think then you not necessarily have like a pay to win because you can't necessarily pay to win in a game like Spider-Man, but you would have potentially gameplay advantages earlier in the story than other players might. Gotcha. I never played City That Never Sleeps. Maybe I know the DLC. Maybe mm. I should give it a shot leading up to two just to hype myself up. Yeah. Same, I've heard it was about mid. It's it's not great, but I think that there's enough enough interesting narrative stuff in there that it's worth it. But the gameplay is where it was like, yeah, it's more of the same. And some of the stuff that they implemented was not great. But right. story-wise, I think it was solid. Okay, I'll give it a shot. I do have Spider-Man. I did. I did purchase the stupid Miles Morales edition that included Spider-Man Remastered. Yeah. So I'll. It's quite oh, short. You could you could burst through the story part of it quite yeah. quick. Oh wait, I think I started New Game Plus. Hopefully, it didn't cannibalize my new game and new game save. I think they're still stored separately. Yeah, it shouldn't do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it sucks that there's not extra stuff on top of that with a digital lux edition or you know the content that we had in ps4 but you know it, it's like i think this is the least egregious egregious thing they could have done you know like like you're saying if that if these suits did have abilities attached to them that would be worse if there was if they were charging more than ten dollars for it i think that'd be worse but essentially if you boil it down you're paying a dollar a suit which like it sucks that you have to do that but at least they aren't ridiculously overcharging i I'm, it, it could be copium but it's like it could be a lot a lot yeah. worse and you know what the stupid thing is what i still might get the digital x version anyway because i'm a little baby there you go <laughs> there you go you know okay. i know Bree's really excited yeah. You've been watching so much Marvel, Brie. You sure you don't want to try Spider-Man? The game? Um, the narrative is actually very good. 
in Spider Man 2018. I'm pretty sure the game is going to make me wildly motion sick, to be honest with you. Actually, as someone who's gotten motion sick for motion blur, especially in Doom, like Doom 2016, I had to turn it off. Spider Man 2018 and Miles Morales did not kill me. See, I'm at the point where I'm so old that I have to turn off motion blur and any kind of camera bobbing in all games. Bree, we're not, you're not old. So, oh, I'm so old. You're 20, 27, correct? Yeah, that is correct. That is the age that many famous musicians died, but it's not old. Taylor's trying to kill me. Confirm. <laughs> <laughs> and you play the flute. I'm not trying that to say anything. That is true. I, I am a, a flood. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ready? Next one. I want to read right. story six. I heard yeah. you say that several times. So I'm a little <laughs> toddler. <laughs> Persona 5 Tactics game, Persona 3 Remake, revealed by Atlas. Da, 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 da. Um, so Atlas will release a remake or extensive remaster of Persona 3, the 2006 role-playing game that debuted on PlayStation 2. The release is going to come in early 2024. Um, and then Persona 3, it'll be called Persona 3 Reload. Um, it's going to be on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Series X, and uh, Windows PC. And it will be available through Game Pass and Steam. No Switch version announced. Um, although every other Persona game, including Persona 5 Royal, has made its way to Nintendo console. Um, okay, I'm going to skip past that because I don't think that that's true. Um, Persona 3 Remake is running on Unreal Engine, which I think is interesting. Um, okay. And then separately, Atlas also confirmed a new Persona 5 spinoff game, Persona 5 Tactica. Um, the game is slated is slated for release on November 17th and appears to be a turn-based, grid-based take on Persona, um, such as like Fire Emblem or XCOM. Um, the cast of Persona 5 is shown in a slightly more cartoonish form, battling enemies using various attacks, um, Persona summons, and team-based team -based moves. Um, that's about everything. This is from Polygon from Michael McWhorter. McWhorter? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, they also released another game, but it's only for Xbox and PC. So, or they're talking about their other new game that's not. What Did metaphor? Just... Hmm. Metaphor, you mean? Yeah. That that's that's multi-platform. On the website, on Atlas's website, currently it only says Xbox and Windows. There, there has been a statement put out that it is coming okay. to okay, PS5, cool. PS4 as well. Awesome. So then, yeah really weird game title but you know it's atlas so what can yeah. you do doesn't really do much for me i mean we knew it all because it leaked ahead of the xbox showcase obviously but they yeah, yeah, leaked I'm it on their own really instagram a persona person so <laughs> right i haven't played I persona haven't 3 persona 4 that. and i've played like 16 hours of persona 5 so i might just play persona 3 remake one day maybe i've heard that persona 3 is amazing i really want to play persona 3 so I really I'm just want not to make turn based persona. stuff, you know. So. I'm not either. I'm Only genuinely not either, but I love Persona. It's the music, man. It's... Did you ever beat a Persona game? How much of a Persona? Asking... What's the? How many hours have you put into a single Persona game? The most hours. I've only played Persona Five, and I probably put like forty hours in. Oh, that's a lot. Would be my guess. Maybe. Then, then you just stopped. I don't know. Why'd you stop? Yeah. Because she always stops. <laughs> My. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> I don't Rhetorical know. Rhetorical question. <laughs> Why does Bree stop? Because she does. It's a, it's a question that just goes in, in a circle. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Right. Okay, next. I saw All the right. one you crossed out, and I'm very, I'm, I'm very cross with you. Okay, we can re-add it, Bree. No, it's fine. You sure? Yeah. I'll just cry later. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so Sony started testing cloud streaming on its PS5 games. PlayStation Plus premium members will have access to stream PS5 titles without having to download them to their console. This comes to us from Jaron Pavich. I hope I pronounced that. I would assume Eastern European name correctly. Sony says it has started testing the ability to stream PS5 games from the cloud. And 
quote, we're currently testing cloud streaming for supported, for supported PS5 games. This includes PS5 titles from the PlayStation Plus catalog and game trials, as well as supported digital PS5 titles that player own. According to Nick McGuire, VP of Global Services, Global Sales and Business Operations at Sony. He says when this feature launches, cloud gaming, cloud game streaming for supported PS5 titles will be available for use directly on your console. And yeah, and people are speculating they'll add this to, I think I also speculated on this in a previous episode, a lot of cloud streaming functionality to Project Q. I thought it was only, it only made sense. But my naysayer said otherwise, I think we're on our way for handheld cloud streaming solutions by Sony. And yeah, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is the thing that puts premium over over the edge for some people, but the quality of Sony's game streaming on the past or currently with their PS3 titles has been inconsistent. Yeah. Of course, much of that variance is down to your own internet connection, but I think there's still been an aggregate attitude that the quality of the streaming on ex- even on excellent internet connect connections, internet connections has been questionable. And if that's been the case on PS3 games, do they allow you to stream some PS4 games? Yeah. Sidebar, yeah. Um, how's the PS4 game streaming? Is it a similar experience? Yeah, know? I mean, again, completely dependent on your internet connection. And even then, not like really bad by any means. Not that the PS3 is really bad, but it is uh, not where it needs to be, put it that way. Okay, yeah. I have concerns for the fidelity of a lot of first-party PlayStation 5 titles. Imagine trying, Sam, you said Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores is like the best-looking game yeah. you've ever seen. Imagine trying mm-hmm. to stream that. With, with data caps, it's a mighty, mighty, at least in the U.S., there are data caps on the internet for many mm-hmm. cable and internet providers. Mm-hmm. They're not cable, internet service providers. So in theory, it seems cool. I just, I don't see the implementation being fantastic. But just having the option, it might rack in the yeah. dollars. I, th- I think that's the main takeaway is just that they have, they're putting the infrastructure in place that even if, the, the quality of the streaming isn't up to snuff right now. They at least have the feature ready to go. So then over time, as streaming becomes more viable across the globe, regardless of where you are, um, they you can just jump straight in. It's not like a Sony are being proactive as opposed to reactionary, which is good because a lot of the time, especially with like the su- subscription service, streaming-y stuff, they have been reactive after the fact once somebody else has started doing it and finding success. And obviously they aren't as in in the weeds as Xbox are in the streaming space, but this is a step in the right direction because people have been asking for PS5 streaming for before the PS5 came out. So, you know, at least it's finally going to be here soon-ish, it seems. I haven't been asking for it. But you know what? It means you don't have to wait for a, you don't have to wait to download a game from the PlayStation Plus catalog. You're like, there you go. I don't have my Ratchet and Clank disc nearby. I can just go into PlayStation Plus, play it immediately. Boom, boom. You know, that's con- that's convenient, Bree, is what that is. Is it? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What else is it if not convenient? Um, sounds like something I won't use. Wow. One day, I guarantee it, you'll you'll be like, "Wow, I'm glad this is a feature that I can use." Will I? Yeah. Okay, sure. Even if, even if you like buy all of your games digitally or physically and like installing them or whatever, I guarantee you there'll be a disc. thing. You, you know what would be great for, Brie? You could try Spider-Man without even having to wait to install it. You could just be like, I'm going to give it a go. And then you can boot it up, play for five minutes, just off the bat without any waiting. And then you'll know. Then you'll know the answer to the question whether you get motion sick or not. That's convenient, Brie. Do you know what that is? That's convenient. <laughs> if I say it enough, you'll believe it. 
<laughs> Especially with that, the tone of voice and the eyebrows is what got yeah. me. Yeah. You know, that might not be as inconvenient as Capcom's mysterious sci-fi game, Pragmata, <laughs> getting delayed. All right. Capcom <laughs> revealed for our next story that this weird sci-fi space it looks that so game that is not Starfield is delayed indefinitely. So it's all new um, action adventure game that was announced in 2020. And I didn't even know this game existed before the story. Me neither. Um, what? Yeah. A new trailer, <laughs> but a new trailer in Capcom showcase. It looks cool though. Um, they showed a new trailer in their Capcom showcase in this past week. And they also apologized that it's, they just need more time on it. But it's with yeah, a heavy heart. Like, we, need more time. <laughs> we must further postpone the release of Pragmata. Read a statement credited to their development team. Our team is currently hard at work at work making the best game that we possibly can, but we need more time. We will continue to do our best to ensure that the final product is one that is worthy of your patience. They're not even committing to a 2024 window. Um, this yep. comes to us from Polygon by Michael McWhorter. They're like, we'll release it sometime. And some. Do you think this is one of those games that's going to get canceled? No. Well, no. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe. So the trailer because showed sometimes a little. Sometimes that happens. Go ahead. The trailer, the trailer showed um, a little girl named Diana who appears to have some magical or technological powers, ignoring her protector's uh, plea to help him deal with some mechanical enemies. Um, from there, it looks like Capcom actually revealed some an engine gameplay footage with the your space astronaut with your astronaut companion. Um, and Diana gets on his back while he battles uh, the enemies. And also there's a giant mech that can fight alongside the protagonist. Maybe that's related to Diana and purely based on the gameplay between these two characters of Diana and the, this astronaut. It seems that it might be Capcom's take on, on maybe a father and daughter story like the last of us or 2018's God of War. Um, so yeah, Pragmata was originally slated for 2022 and they revealed it at a PlayStation showcase in 2020. And that brings us to now where it's been delayed. Definitely it's coming at PS5 of PC and series X. It also have, um, a little robot who wears a baseball hat <laughs> from their trailer. Um, so it's been delayed for those who have been following maybe a niche title like this. Um, but it is another space game. So if you want to have access to Starfield and for some reason can't play No Man's Sky, please be excited for this space game. Actually, please be excited for Star Wars Outlaws. All right. That game looks wow. stellar. Sam. Yeah, I was, I was gonna I was, I was gonna say that I don't I don't think Pragmata is gonna be anything like No Man's Sky or Starfield. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I think that's I a bit misleading so. Taylor. I just said it was a space game. All right. Okay, go play Elite Dangerous if you like. You're Starfield, right. All right, you know? Elite Dangerous, so boring. Sorry. Go play Post Star Citizen if you like Star Citizen. Star Citizen backers are getting scammed every go day. Play Outer Wild. Why would yes, Why would Mark Hamill Wild. participate in that? You know, why would he do that? He's a good. He's a good bloke. Why would he do Mark that? Mark Hamill participated in what? Star Citizen. Really? Yeah, he's he's one of the characters in it. Oh God. You can do better he was like one of the main drawing points. They were like, oh, we got Mark Hamill. <sighs> God damn it. Not Elon McGregor, you know what I mean? I'm, surpri I'm surprised you guys d didn't know about Pragmata before because it was at the uh, very first PS5 showcase. And there was a whole hullabaloo of like, it looks like Ludens from Kojima Productions. It's not a Kojima game, even though the initial trailer was like reeking of Kojima-ness. Mm -hmm. And like now, it looks like it, like you say, it's God of War. I was like, what? I, th I just, don't, what is the? I don't think they know What's what this game what is. This game is, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like what you were saying, Bree, I think it feasibly could get cancelled. It could just be like vapor and just disappear. Just well, the thing is, is like it's delayed. We'll we'll get it out at some point, and then like any in, in like two years, they'll be like, yeah, that game was cancelled. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And just kind of like yeah. sweep it under the rug, and it's gone. And why would why would they include the delay in the trailer? Yeah, they're like, here's the trailer, but it's delayed. <laughs> There's just a little note that floats that down. It's like, we're up. sorry. <laughs> so, that's so weird. So why, why would you do that? You know, don't say sorry unless you're not going to do it again. As Kratos would say, don't be sorry, be better. Mm. 
No, 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 no. Daddy Kratos. Okay. Wow. Oh, God. I forgot to mention Clive is so hot. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Clive. And what? Protagonist of Final Fantasy Final Fantasy 16. 16. Oh, he's oh so I don't even know who that is yet. I'll know, I'll he's I'll so be introduced later tough. today. Okay. Are there also characters of other gender orientations who are hot in the game? Yes. Good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Dude, that w- we'll talk about it later. Never mind. Never mind. I don't want to spoil things for Taylor. Okay. All right. Next one. We're going to make these last few really quick. Um, okay. So Dead Cells is getting a animated series. Uh, Motion Twin has announced a Dead Cell animated series following quote years of requests. Uh, the series is made by Bobby Pills, the French studio. I did not know that was the name of the studio. <laughs> it's funny to me. Anyways, uh, the French studio behind the game's animated trailers um, and co-produced by anime streaming service um, Animation Digital Network. It will consist of 10 roughly seven minute episodes and will launch next year in France before being made available worldwide. Um, the show takes place on surprise surprise a cursed island that has been wrecked by a strange plague according to a description accompanying the teaser trailer which is viewable in this article um after the island's foolish king develops a remedy that ends up turning the population into a monstrous creature prophecies depicted a flame-headed hero who will kill the crazy king begin to appear as it so happens the beheaded hero is real um but saving a kingdom isn't on his schedule and he just wants to be left alone well guess who isn't going to be left alone I've never played Dead Cells. It has a no, 10 out of 10. I have not played Dead Cells either. Joining the never played. Well, I've we are the it. experts on this then, aren't we? Uh, yeah. um, Wait, Sam, you haven't played it either? Dead Cells no. has a 10 out of 10 on Steam right now. Okay. Overwhelmingly yeah, positive. Very hard to that good. Yeah. I wonder. I probably own it, to be honest with you guys. It's a Souls-like rogue. Yeah. Rogue-like. Souls-like it's like on rogue-like. PlayStation Plus. <gasps> <gasps> that was way too much energy for me. <laughs> is it okay we'll say the castlevania expansion got me interested too yeah yeah, yeah. i mean I, I, I we can't speak to it because we haven't played the game i'm still excited i'm always about i'm always skeptical of how you could turn a roguelite into a show and have it work properly mm-hmm. um but castlevania as a show works oh man you know it would be a good show hades hady's as a show well everyone just be thirsting over yeah i would yeah because it's just thirst trap the show (laughs) but so but like if you take hades for example as probably a Uh more well-known roguelite is the entire show going to be like one run so to speak i I would imagine one run i don't think so but I, I, i just don't know how well that translates if you are essentially like i mean i know there would be differences well, episode to episode but I if mean, you're just rerunning the same thing so episode speaking, to episode speaking from like actually like one of my favorite shows of all time is ReZero which is basically that he he's caught in this time loop and he can only move forward if certain conditions are met and he dies in very brutal ways and he feels the pain every time and so like that's kind of how that loop works and it's it's one of the best written shows um anime obviously um it's fantastic. So it, it does work really well. It just, another one is um, Erased. Um, it's another anime. It's the same thing where he um, he has a power where something's going to go wrong and he can't, he has to, he'll see like a butterfly and he has to figure out what's going wrong before like something happens. And then if it doesn't, he'll like jump back in time so he can try and fix it. Hmm. Um, so there's stuff like that that happens a lot. And so it's just, it dependent on how they handle it. And it, I don't think it's that difficult of a thing to handle, to be to be completely honest. I wouldn't be stressed about that. Mm, there you go. Oh. Cool. Speed running the last stories, ladies and gentlemen. There's a Hideo Kojima documentary coming. Ah. It's called Connecting Worlds, and it got an official trailer recently, promising a creative journey into the mind of a video games icon. He's really PlayStation pissed. and Kojima Productions have released a new trailer for the Hideo Kojima documentary. Known as Connecting Worlds, this documentary will provide us 
a rare insight into Kojima's creative process with the likes of Norman Reedus and filmmaker Guillermo del Toro contributing to the upcoming production. Uh, in, a short in the short trailer, Reedus likens working with Kojima to stepping into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory with Willy Wonka. You probably could have just said Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. We would have got connotation. Anyway, meanwhile, the text on screen proclaims that Kojima is widely regarded as the first author of video games. Uh, this documentary is set to cover Kojima's experience founding Kojima Productions as well as his creative process in general. As for when it will be available to watch, the trailer simply states that it is coming soon, but it will have its world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, which I think has just happened. Yeah. Oh, I, I have is currently happening. Oh. Um, I I, I've seen this. them on stage debuting it, put it that way. Mm. Um in the meantime, Kojima has been busy with Death Stranding sequel. Oh, it just ended today. There we go. Yeah, so it's just concluded. Um, yeah, so a documentary is coming. Uh, yeah, I have a. Yeah. I think Kojima is might be a hardcore narcissist, and this could not have stroked his ego more. That's what I was wondering. Is is like, do you think he was like, I want a documentary, or do you think yes. somebody else approached him? Because no, if it's I, coming from Kojima Pro Productions, like that's his team, right? I think he hired a filmmaker. He's like, please work. Was like, no, you know, <laughs> I really like the idea that one of his workers was like, you're just so cool. Can I make a documentary about I, you? I He's seriously like, think this is what happened. Yeah. And Kojima being, <laughs> having the ego he does was so excited. I mean, I'm still kind of excited to watch this. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> if there's going to be a documentary about a video game creator, I would probably want it to be Kojima. I watched your hand. No, Miyamoto. No, she mm, I mean, yeah, but in terms of like widespread renown, this makes more sense. Mm. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid yet. All right, Miyazaki. I no. take it all back, Miyazaki. I mean, I yeah, that too, sure. Nah, but again, in terms of like name recognition, I <laughs> not that necessarily Kojima is super well known, like in the mainstream, but he is more mainstream than Miyamoto and. Um, he brought in film also. stars for Death Stranding. Here, yeah. here is my pitch for a documentary. <laughs> we do a documentary called The Miyazakis. Where no. we do no. no. talk to Miyazaki just, and I. Just, just you don't now. even know no. Miyazaki. He could be a horrible person. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Both of the ones, Studio Ghibli and the one at No way. Off. No way, Hayao Miyazaki. Well, actually, he is known for being pretty mean. But. Yeah, I, I like though it, getting back to the story. Like I do like that Kojima is is ingraining himself more with PlayStation. Um, yeah. Not being a fanboy, but I just like it makes the boy. most logical sense for him to associate more with that system. Not only because of the historical lineage of Metal Gear, um, but obviously Sony literally helped him create his studio. Uh, he wouldn't have Kojima Productions if it wasn't for Sony. So is um, Death Stranding 2 multiplot or is it a PlayStation nope, exclusive? No, nope, just PlayStation. And obviously, obviously, Kojima is also working on that Xbox Cloud game that they haven't talked about yet. Um, I mean, they, they announced that Kojima was doing it, but they haven't talked about what the game is. But you know, with him using Decima from Gorilla for, as his game engine, with Sony funding the studio from the get-go, getting exclusive on games. Not that I think they would ever acquire him, but if he was to ever be acquired, I would think it would be PlayStation. Mm. Um, so, I again, just like that's a, a very tangential thing to point out, but... It's good that the partnership is still healthy because I think there were some people that were getting a bit fanboy about it, to be honest, saying that, oh, God, he's gone over to the Xbox thing when his Xbox game was leaked. Um, but it's it's nice that he is still playing the entire field because I think that's where Kojima can thrive most right. in terms and, of and, getting his and Nintendo. What? Hey, not yet. You know? No, that yeah. snake got into Smash and Tooth and Brawl. That's true. That was the yeah. biggest, that was the most hype part of leading up to Brawl. Snake, solid snake hitting a Nintendo platform. What? Yeah. What? Oh, and Metal Gear Solid, likely the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, that volume one that Konami is releasing this fall, I think will likely be releasing on Switch in addition to PC 
Xbox and PlayStation. They ran. I don't, know if, they, I don't know if they've announced that yet. They, I don't think they have. But I would imagine I think, so. I would imagine they really would, especially because yeah. we know those games could just run fine on Switch. Yeah. But yeah, and and also like as a, as a final thing to point out, this doesn't say here in the article, but Kojima was talking at Tribeca about how he's always wanted to make a film, not about himself, but just like be a film director and direct something. He did clarify at Tribeca that he's not going to do that ever as much as he would love to because he cares too much about making games, which is like, I just nice realized sentence. that you can download the demo for Nine Souls. I'm doing that literally right now. Wow. You're so invested in this conversation, aren't you? Yeah. Listen, I'm having issues. I've had, I'm drinking three shots of, of blonde espresso and I'm barely holding it together. You're lucky I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't well, wandered you, off into my room. Where'd you go to bed? Um, probably like one, maybe two. I can't remember. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, but like, like I say, it's just it's cool to see that. As much as I think a Kojima film would be really interesting, um, because he's always done very cool cinematic stuff. I would prefer him to stay in the video game space. Um. As long as he's still enjoying that, which he clearly is, because he's choosing to stay. Um, is he like sixty now? I actually don't know how old he is, but he, he's not a spring chicken anymore. That's for sure. He's been in, been around in the games industry for a long time. He's fifty nine. Jesus. Also, Fair play, way, man. I am paying attention. It's just I need my hands doing something. I have to keep uh, myself doing. I paying attention. You're so funny. Yeah, I know. This is I the kind of I shouldn't you come here for. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't have put down my dice. That was the real problem. I'll put I'll put down oh. my banana. I'll hold the dice. I'll be fine. Okay. Whatever you need. I was crocheting for a reason. <laughs> mm. Well, that concludes. Well. Well. That well. concludes the news for this week. <laughs> Moving on to Limitless. Uh, we have a story here that Brie added. The sound this is from Brie forever ago, bro. Oh, really? Really? Whoops. Yeah. It's fine. No, no. A lot of these are from forever ago. It's totally fine. I was just saying, like, this isn't new. Did we talk about it before? No, we've never talked about it. It's just forever ago. Okay. Um, Delete it. Just... We can talk about it. Silent Hill series producer wants more indie studios to pitch Silent Hill games. What's your Silent Hill pitch? I don't feel qualified to answer this question because I never played Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2, or PT. I haven't either. I haven't played... Well, I played PT for a little bit. Well, only a Actually, little. no. I played PT. I didn't beat it, but I played PT. Um, well, okay. Then as, as the only person that's <laughs> played a Silent Hill Wait, game... Wait, we can still pitch games, but go ahead. Um... My pitch would have been to remake two, but obviously that we know they're doing that. Um, no, you again, indie studios to pitch Silent Hill. Yeah, games, I, I know, so I know, I it. know, I know. Don't but I'm just saying, ideas, but also if they were pit, wanting me to pitch anything for Silent Hill, the first thing I would say, regardless of who was doing it, would be remake Silent Hill two. But they're doing that. Okay, what with about an indie studio? The, what about so the Last counts. of Us PC port? Should we have them do Silent Hill two? <laughs> No, okay. uh, not the blue team is necessarily going to be any better, but hopefully, <gasps> I disagree. Um, yeah, the medium was at most mid. Um, medium, <laughs> hey, hey, um, I'm gonna go really left field, I would say camouflage, which is a VR studio. They worked on Iron Man VR, the uh, first PlayStation VR, which was a very good game. Mm -mm. Not perfect, but good. I think, you know, we've had a few Resident Evil uh, VR experiences. I think Silent Hill would work equally well in VR, if not more so, because of how specifically psychological Silent Hill is. Like Resident Evil, you have the jump scares stuff. Mm -hmm. Silent Hill, you have that, but you can also have stuff appearing literally in your vision 
that isn't there you know like it's it's there you can see it but inside the game it's like the your character so to speak is seeing things i think in vr that would be excellent in terms of immersion um for for you in the player character narratively yeah. speaking so that would be my pitch okay don't really have anything story wise to add to that cuz silent hill is quite ambiguous and and amalgamous with its storytelling but if i had to pitch a game i would say a vr game okay my pitch is going to be like a silent hill kind of in line with pt but um kind of like a bigger version of the dollhouse from village you know you might have gotten close to that if pt became a full game silent hills yeah that's true that's true but, but that's, Konami... that's, that would be my pitch is mm. like just like kind of an enclosed like house experience that's like really creepy i think that would be fun well Yay. fun is a strong word but you know what I mean? interesting i would enjoy it sure you would i would do you have a pitch taylor or meh i don't feel inf informed enough to answer this question thoughtfully okay fair enough okay well there we go we did it we did it reddit rest in peace yeah i trying to go on Reddit. don't go on as a chronic reddit user it's finally pushing well, me away apollo's, from reddit. apollo's dying and yeah, well, we're not going to, I'm really talking about this right now, but <laughs> we're going to head into the post show for this week mm -hmm. where I have a topic. We're going to talk about summer. I specifically. have a very big urge to start singing the In Summer song from Frozen. All right. Well, we can sing it in the post show. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank God I'm not there. All right. <laughs> Ready? Oh, wait, I need to do the outro. No, we Thank can you all so much for listening. It, but... You can find us on YouTube at Save the Game Media, Twitter at Save Game Media, and the Discord. Links are all in the show notes. And then the Patreon. Where we need to get a thousand patrons. Just like Kevin yeah. will get a tattoo on his butt. Okay. Where can people find you, Sam? H. On the edge of my sanity. That's where people can find me. <laughs> um, they can find me on Twitter at Sam Heaney, H E A N E Y. All right. Where can people find you, Brie? Hanging out with my cat. I'm just kidding. Um, at Hi. Fabulous Brianna. <laughs> F-A-B-U-L-I-S-T-B-R-E-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. All right. With all that said, you can find me on the Discord. That's it. Thank you all so much for I listening. I never see you on the Discord. I'm just kidding. And until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, wait. Next week's episode 50. Oh, crap. We'll talk about it later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>